Hiya, sorry I haven't been posting much lately. It's been super hectic here, been very busy. But I thought I'd take out a day today and show you something about chord progressions. Now, whether you're the best player in the world or the lowliest beginner, you very quickly get bored of the sound of yourself. You know, we all fall into familiar patterns. So this is going to be just a few ideas that will hopefully be a springboard for you to break out of your normal self and do something creative. Um, little tricks that can make chord sequences more interesting. Obviously, great songs sometimes can just have two chords, and that's absolutely fine. But sometimes the chords can really dictate the feel of something, and it can be a real important starting point for a song. If you don't know me, by the way, my credentials are I've played with Jamiroquai over 20 years, and I've co-written most of the songs in that time. I've also written with quite a few other people and had quite a bit of success with songwriting. So, you know, I've got some idea of what I'm talking about. That's not to say I know everything. Creativity is a complete blank canvas. You can approach it from so many different ways. These are just ideas for you. If you haven't subscribed, by the way, please do it now and click on the alert bell as well. That'd be great. I uh, really appreciate it. And also for those of you asking me about my vinyl, my album, uh, I've now got a fresh batch of vinyl available. It's on coloured vinyl and you can click on the link below and get that if you want it. All right, let's get started. So you might have heard about the circle of fifths, um, something a lot of people talk about. It's one of these sort of magic chord sequences that just always works. If you go from a fifth to a fifth to a fifth to a fifth, it's kind of just going to work. It's something mathematical about it. Uh, and you'll hear me play fourths as well in these progressions. And you say, well, why is it circle of fifths? You're playing a fourth. But a fourth, if you're going up, is a fifth if you're going down. So it still counts as a fifth. Uh, we're all very familiar with the sound of it. It sounds like this. I've just resolved it at the end there. It's something that can go on around robbing forever. Um, and it's just always a good starting point. So if you're stuck with two chords and you want to know where to go, you can always use this circle of fifths. It's always going to sound harmonically okay, you know, and you can have these circles that go around and then they need resolving. And often a way to resolve that sort of sequence is with a fifth. So if you were in C, that would be a G. I very often use a G11 or a G altered chord to turn around. So. That's your fifth there, it could be. It's almost like a little signpost. Here we go again, back to the beginning of the sequence. One good example of a circle of fifths is Jamiroquai, Virtual Insanity. I should add, I didn't write this song. It was Toby Smith before my time. But it's a great example of a circle of fifths that just gets slightly altered halfway through. So you get... See there, it's straight from the path. But basically, most of the chords are fifths, with the odd little change. And that's almost derived from Autumn Leaves, a jazz standard, it does the same thing. You know, it's a very well-trodden path, but it really works. You know, then you can veer off from it. It's just a cool little trick to use those fifths and then just throw in something that's going to help you get back round because otherwise it can just tumble and tumble forever. Another good way of spicing up a progression is to throw in an altered chord. Uh, what's an altered chord? 
literally what it says, you're just altering a chord by changing one of the notes. It's often the ninth note or the fifth note in the scale. So for instance, if I had a C9, you get a ninth by counting up to nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's a dominant ninth chord. If you flatten that ninth, that's an altered chord, you get a flat ninth. You can also sharpen the ninth. And then with a fifth, again, often a raised fifth is good with an altered chord. So I could have the sharp ninth and a raised fifth. Quite a nice chord that I use all the time. Or a flat ninth with a raised fifth. In fact, those two, one after the other, sounds good as a little progression. So if you're in F, it's just a little turnaround again. You usually wouldn't use an altered chord as the main chord. You know, so often if, for instance, here I'm in F minor, I'm using an F minor nine. To resolve, then I'll put, I'll go up to the five again, it's always a great turnaround, and use that altered chord with a sharp fifth and a flattened ninth. And they can be just interesting in any sequence, you know, instead of... You can have... That chord, learn that chord in every key, it's a really handy turnaround chord. Just a turn around each time. Go to the fifth. That kind of inversion can always be quite an interesting sound that will just take you somewhere else. Here's a song I co-wrote ages ago with someone. That was a really big hit for us in uh, France with this guy called Julian Peretta. Um, and basically, it started around this riff. And I just had this. And then I tried to move the chords around the riff. So I just tried to make it work with different bass notes. Didn't quite work, so I slightly altered it. because I wanted to get the G-sharp in there for the E. So then the chords are becoming a hook in their own right, you know, and I'm trying to play these little clustered chords that are all quite close together. Blurs it up a bit, but gives it a hook. So that can really work in a lot of different situations. Uh, let me try and make another one up. So it's a basically quite a boring sequence. But because I'm sort of turning it into a riff, it makes it it gives it a lot more interest, you know, and it gives it a bit of a hook. So there I'm just playing a free note riff. And moving the bass notes is making it sound different each time. Mm -hmm. 
again, is how the bass can alter what the chords are doing. But here I'm not actually playing any chords because sometimes you don't always have to come up with a chord sequence. Sometimes it can be just a little melody. I mean, you hear a lot of, especially the older uh, Coldplay tunes, you know, there'd just be a little piano free note riff with kind of bass notes moving around it. You know, um, I can't think of one, but it's something like... can sort of break you out of the thing of oh I've got to come up with some chords you know no just come up with a riff and then find some bass notes that move around play the same melody find a motif move the bass around so that it changes the inference of the melody if you know what I mean the nice thing about something like that is you can write that and then you can break out into chords afterwards so I'm making this stuff on the fly it might be a bit crap but let's try just two sections but that straight away feels like it could be a song and a vocalist would probably find it quite easy to come up with something on top of that if they've got any talent <laughs> another idea is instead of trying to come up with the most original and interesting chord sequence ever invented in the history of music try and get a nice hooky beat and do some staccato chords around it and let the beat drive the composition so for instance i've got four chords here and a cool little beat. Let me play it for you. So, so I'm just accenting with the drum machine and that is then creating a, a very strong flavour. So even though they're quite standard chords. I put a little turnaround the second time, I'm changing the minor 7 into a major 9. You know, it's just a nice little change there. Subtle small difference but basically very simple chords following the groove. Okay, let's try and incorporate it with the circle of fifths, but I'm gonna do it a bit differently. I'm gonna make the inversions a bit more unusual. So instead of like F minor to B flat minor, I'm gonna go F minor, and I'm gonna alter this chord to make it, which is a B flat 11 with a flattened fifth. Getting into kind of Brazilian territory there, and you can, so let's see what that sounds like with the beat. Okay, let's change that even more now. Let's play the same chords, but instead of having the bass on F, we'll have it for B flat for both of the two chords, first two chords. So you can see how you can be creative with these things like circle of fifths. If you just did it exactly like that as a circle of fifths, it's kind of boring and very, very familiar. But you can take the idea from that and then go away from it, change the bass, alter some of the chords, break away from the circle of fifths and find a different chord. Um, and that will take you to more interesting places. One more little idea. What about stripping down your chord sequences. So if you've got a uh,
rather than enhancing it, take away some of it. You know, just go down to the root and fifth. Gives it a different vibe straight away because you've gone away from stating the whole chord. Adds a little element of mystery. You know, you can do that in various ways, but, you know, let's say you did it like that. Find a rhythm, strip it down a bit, and then instead of playing the chords on the top, find a riff. Sorry, got a bit carried away there. But, you know, that can be interesting as well. Don't state all of the chord. I'll often do something like that. Just use two notes of a chord rather than stating the whole chord. And then you get these sort of vibes. Gives you somewhere to go as well. Instead of always adding, sometimes think of taking away stuff. Okay, well, I hope you got something out of that. Until next time, take care.